Welcome to the Loon Ladies Lowdown. I'm your host Matt and I'm joined by a special guest this week, player of the match from the FA Cup win against St Albans City. Welcome to the Loon Ladies pod, Liz Mulvaney. How are you today? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to, to be on the podcast. Of course, yeah, more than welcome to have you on. Um, so let's take a look back at the last game against St Albans City and any other news around the ladies team. Okay, football. So, on to the game on Sunday. Uh, the Luton Ladies won against St Albans City. It was the replay fixture in the FA Cup, the third round qualifier. It was a very wet, windy, rainy day down at Barton. Um, I was down there and we won with a 2-0 victory. So, obviously, congratulations for that. Um, I've got to kind of say, St Albans, I think they did really well uh, defensively. They were forcing a number of shots kind of from outside of the box. Um, with their keeper making a few key saves. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I think they felt a lot more structured this week than the week before. I just felt like they'd, I don't know, definitely worked on that. You could tell. I've, I found it hard to break down, especially in the first half. Yeah, you, def- I, you definitely had, when you did get the ball, you did look like you had a lot of space, though, in that midfield, because you were basically, I think it was you, Shy, and Fee. You basically... Uh, kept them in their half, I'd probably say for most of the game. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think so. I think I think they definitely sat back. I think they were more of not parking the bus, but definitely like letting us come towards them. And I think that probably was their game plan. Uh yeah, definitely in midfield there's a bit of space. I think they were letting us bring it forward, which was quite nice for us in midfield, but yeah, it was definitely hard in that final third. Definitely, yeah. It was yeah. it felt it felt a lot like, as I said before, the way they were able to defend and their keeper as well. Credit to their keeper. Yeah, did well. Um, yeah, did really well. They forced all the shots to be kind of... It was only until later in the game when I think maybe they got a bit more tired um, yeah. that we were kind of able to show a bit more pressure going forward and get more shots from actually inside the box. Yeah, it opened up a little bit. And I think, you know, always when you bring someone like Gabs on who's just going to run and ragged, I think that really like opened the game up and allowed us a little bit more freedom in that in the box. I think we had more shots in the final at half an hour than we did in the in the whole game, like in the box. Yeah, definitely that. Um, in the so the first goal, uh, got to talk about that. Obviously, the first goal was a corner uh, from yeah. Fee. She knocked it right into the middle. Bridget was able to get it knocked on over to Fensum, who headed it home with pretty yeah. much ease as she does. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. It was a great goal. It's a shame that the overhead kick didn't go in oh. from Bridget slightly earlier. That would have been unbelievable. Uh, yeah. But no, I'm glad she got the assist and, you know, Tash is always there to, to bungle them in, isn't she? So it was yeah. good. The the chance you're talking about, that was absolutely phenomenal. It, <laughs> yeah. it was in about the 55th or something like that minute, came yeah. across, and uh, Bridget just, I don't know how, athletically, I don't know how. Did, a, did a kind of half backflip, tried to <laughs> bicycle kick the ball in. Uh, their keeper did, unfortunately for Bridget uh, managed to stop that one. It was a good save as well, because I didn't think she had much time to react. She no. got down really quickly. Yeah. A- again, credit to, to St Auburn City's keeper. Um, the second goal, uh, that was in the 95th. There was 90 plus 10 minutes in this game, which was... Yeah. Felt a bit excessive. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think it was because Bridget went down and he kept saying he was going to add on loads of time for some reason. We asked him at, at that point. He was like, yeah, I'm going to add 10 on. I'm not really sure what uh, what he was thinking, but he was a bit of a... He was, a, he was an interesting ref, some of the things. He didn't like us time-wasting when we went 1-0 up. I think I told uh, Huds not to pick the ball up at goal kick and he had a go at me. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> he was a bit of a weird guy. It was an interesting one. <laughs> uh, but in the 90 plus five... Of that 90 plus 10 minutes, 95th minute, uh, Gabs just showed her skill, showed her pace. Uh, she outclassed the defender, I'd say, got through one on one with the goalkeeper and she almost tore the net off with that shot. Yeah, it was a great shot. It was the perfect placement as well, just up high above the keeper's head, just smashed it into the near post. It was a great goal. Gabs doing what Gabs does best, I guess. Definitely. And it obviously, yeah. I think, helped that the other team were a bit tired at this point. And obviously, Gabs yeah. is so full of energy yeah. coming up. I would hate to defend against her so fast. Yeah, definitely. And 
that does also remind me at some point there is going to be a race set up between Gabs and Ellie. I think Jess is oh, planning yeah. to set up a race to see who's kind of the fastest at some point. I'll have to Ooh. remind her of that. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I would, I guess, suppose so. Yeah, I think it would be a good race. Definitely was. I think it was, Ellie was the fastest before Gabs turned up. But now I think uh, Ellie said that Gabs is faster than her. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'd probably put my money on Gabs, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, and then... I've got to also say, you also won the player of the match. And this was, I believe, in your first game um, against Steve yeah. Rich as well. How How is it kind of getting the recognition, obviously, from Miles and Faddy as player of the match? How does that feel for you as the player? Um, obviously, it's great to, to get these man of the matches. I think I think I'm often one of these players that doesn't really realise what, what I'm doing when I'm just on the pitch. You just sort of just play. So it was nice to get that recognition. That first game in particular was obviously hard to get used to, just getting used to your new midfield partnerships across the pitch. And I think it was nice to get into the team and it just helped me feel a bit more comfortable, I guess, for the following games. And then this game, again, I watched the game this morning and I think I just remembered, it's just nice to be able to rewatch it because I think when they said I was player of the match, I didn't quite understand why. And then I watched it back and I was like, okay, I did this and this. And it's nice to be able to like think, okay, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a nice feeling to to get that support from your managers. I can agree with that. Yeah, well done. Obviously, congratulations. Thank for both. I was uh, the Stevenish game was a a very tough game. I remember it as well. Yeah, one nil, one nil. I believe we won that one by. Yeah, it was one nil. Yeah, it was good. They were great defending as well. I think, and they got a penalty. I think in the quite late on. Yeah, and they skied it. So we got obviously got a bit lucky, which which helps, but. You know, credit to our defence. I think this this season has just been unbelievable. Only conceding four goals is is crazy. Yeah, obviously credit to uh, Huds, 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 but then also Bridget, Ellie, Tan, all of those guys. They're all absolutely yeah. killing it at the minute. Hundred uh, percent. I, I that leads me to another nice question. Um, how is the team kind of? You, you've already briefly talked about this. How's the team kind of gelling now? You've been together for. I'm going to say I'm going to say eight games. It is officially it's only six games because two of them yeah. have been called off. Uh, but obviously, you're new to the team this season. How are things kind of gelling with everyone and all the new players coming in? I mean, I think everyone's been super super welcoming. I think we're starting to all like you know. I think it you know you sort of stick with people at the start, but I think everyone's sort of opening up now and getting to know everyone. And I I think it's a lovely team, and I've really really enjoyed getting to know everyone. And I just think it's going to keep getting better and better. The changing room is always uh, very loud and uh, some good vibes. So, yeah, it's been brilliant so far. Yeah, here there's uh, a few jokers in the changing rooms and you've got some <laughs> music playing on the Luton Ladies Spotify. Yeah, yeah. And stuff. yeah, there's so, some yeah. funny girls in the team, which is it keeps it entertaining anyway. For sure. Uh, so that leads me to another nice question. Um, so prior to playing for Luton Ladies, uh, you came from London Seaward FC yeah. um, and you won player of the match in your last game there, which I feel like is a theme for you now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then before that, it was AFC Wimbledon under 23s. Um, can you just maybe explain in your own words how you got into football, uh, what your journey has been so far and then ultimately why you joined Luton? Yeah, okay. Uh, obviously, looking back, I'm from Loughborough, so it's quite like a sporty little area. Uh, I just played football because my brother played and then did the classic, moved around loads of teams around here. I think it's it was like Leicester, Forest were my big, were the two I was at. And then I went back to Leicester when I was under 17 and I actually tore my knee in like the second game of the season for the reserves and that knocked me out a little bit. Um so I think I was out for six months and then I went back to Loughborough. They were Loughborough Foxes at the time. I think they're Loughborough Lightning now. And then I went to university. So I went to university down in London um, and I just played for my university team for like three, three, four years. Um, kept tearing my knee. I tore my knee four more times, I think. Uh, so it was, I never really finished a season, which was a bit of a shame. I barely played any matches. And then about Christmas two and a half years ago, I decided to try and get back into football properly and like into a team and try and like repair my knee. 
And Wimbledon under 23s were the only team that even asked, like, let me come and train or trial. Because I think, you know, when you have four years break of not playing for a team, not many people are willing to take a gamble on you, especially halfway through a season. Um, but they were kind enough to let me go play. I've got a few more games under my belt. Really enjoyed it. Had a couple of ex- uh, appearances for the first team, I think, towards the end. And then they disbanded the under-23s. So I had to uh, find a new team. And I knew someone at Seaward who I played with at uni. So I joined Seaward. And that was a fantastic year. I loved that. I, a lovely group of girls, great managers, uh, really enjoyed it. They sort of fell apart again at the end of last year. Um, and I moved back to Loughborough. So then I was finding a new team and I trialed at Loughborough Lightning, but uh, it didn't really work out there. They have some unbelievable midfielders and I I knew I was not going to like start or get much game time. So then I messaged my old manager who put me in touch with Faddy. And then I went down to one training session and then I was at the game at the weekend. So I joined really late Luton and first training session, first game, I loved it and decided to sign. I just thought the team was brilliant. I thought the managing staff seemed really, really nice, really friendly and like seemed like a good group of guys. So just carried on and I'm loving it still. Really happy to be here, actually. Awesome. And we're really happy to have you, obviously, yeah. with the team. Uh, yeah, no, it seems sounds like Faddy is a kind of a, a real architect of getting players in. Yeah, I think he has a lot of connections and I think he, which is super important in football, and I think he's really, really good at that. Um, and I just, yeah, he just let me come down and have a little, have a look at me. And yeah, now I'm here, loving it. And winning player of the match twice. Yeah. Out of six, out of six games as well. So it's not exactly a small feat that you've done. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hope we get some more, you know. Keep sure. trying. Lots, lots of games still to come. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's do some fun, fun questions. I'll say fun questions in inverted commas. Um <laughs> Do you have any pre-match rituals? Do you get superstitious at all? I really don't. I just sort of, it's never the same. I just sort of show up. I'm quite forgetful as well. So it's often more me panicking, forgetting my roller, socks I forgot a game, like stuff like that. So it's more okay. panicking in the changing room rather than superstitions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you get nervous at all before games? Um, Not really. I think. I think now I'm just quite comfortable. Like last season, I think I did a little bit, but towards the end, yeah, just sort of, I don't know. There's nothing, you can only control what you can control, I think is now my philosophy. So I think it's just not not too nervous really, no. I believe it was uh, former Luton Town men's manager, John Steele, that said, control the controllables. So, exactly. It's yeah. true, it's true. Um, and then do you have any songs or playlists that you listen to to get you hyped up for the game? I'm so boring. I really don't know. I really just sort of show up. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think so, no. I kind of, I don't usually listen to rap in my day-to-day life, but I'd say I probably listen to it a little bit more on a game day. I just think that sort of gets you a bit hyped up, I think, a little bit. So it's kind of just stick the Loon Ladies playlist on? Yeah. Or it's, or it's just I playing in the background in the change yeah. rooms? I mean, it's quite loud, so it's not really changing in the background. <laughs> it's blasting. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so now we're going to do five quickfire questions. Okay. Um, so don't think too hard on these. So tango apple or tango orange? Orange. Okay. Beach holiday or city break? City break. Okay. Indian or Mexican takeaway? Indian. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. And the final one. Uh, would it be better for you to stop an attacker getting through to on goal or setting up the forward cross to a striker to get the goal? Ooh, uh, forward cross. Sorry, it was quick fire, wasn't it? Forward cross, forward cross. Okay. Yeah, I love an assist. Oh. Well, thank you for that. Um, so let's look at any other news that's happened around the Luntown ladies. Um, so... After the victory from the St Albans City game, Luton have progressed to the first round proper of the FA Cup and they're going to be playing against Hutton FC away. That is at Hannikins Farm Community Centre in Hutton, Essex. And that is on the 3rd of November and that's going to be at one o'clock kickoff. Uh, so obviously keep an eye out for that. Uh, and our next upcoming fixture 
uh, is going to be... So the league fixture is going to be against Royston. Uh, they won their last game, which has kept them at the top. But that's our actual next fixture, and that's on the 10th of November at Barton. Yeah. Before we talk about that, though, the next actual game is the League Cup game against Hartford T- Town FC Women. That is on Sunday, the 27th, at half one, kicking off at Barton. What are your thoughts ahead of that fixture? Um, yeah, I don't know too much about them. I think it might be a harder game than we're expecting. I think they've done pretty well um, in their league so far. Um, but it should be good. I think, you know, all of these games are a must win at the moment. I mean, I think considering where we are in the league, they're all must wins. But yeah, I think it would be a, a big, be a good game. Maybe we'll see a bit of squad rotation to try and like rest some legs, but it should be good. I believe they're in either fourth or fifth in their league. I did have a, a brief yeah. look earlier. So yeah, no, they're doing they're doing well. I think they've only played five fixtures though as well. Oh really? Oh that's yeah. not many. No. Um I think like our league, like Luton specifically, there's been a few games that have been moved around hmm. or postponed, etc. Um but yeah, okay, cool. And then obviously the big game is the Royston game. Yeah. Um can we catch them? They're currently nine points ahead of us, but they have played two more fixtures. It's going to be a big six-pointer on the 10th yeah. of November. How um, excited? Pardon? How excited are you for that? Um, I love a big game, so definitely excited. I think it's our chance to actually show them. I don't know, because the first game I didn't play in, so I watched it back. But I think it's our chance to show the league what we're made of and how far we've come in the last like eight games or something. So it'll be a really big game. And I think, yeah, we've got a not only win, it'll be good to get a few goals to catch up on goal difference. Because at the end of the day, it might come down to that. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Should be good. Big, bit nervous for that one. I will be nervous for that one, actually. It's. Uh, I would love to get promoted. It's always fun being in a promotion battle, isn't it? Yeah. And Luton have been in a promotion battle race yeah. for the last three or four seasons. So. Yeah. Hopefully this year is the year that we do it. Um, but make sure, obviously, if you're listening on the 10th of November, get down to Barton, two o'clock kickoff, show your support for the Luton ladies. Uh, but also go this weekend as well, support the ladies in the cup game as well. And that is, I think that's everything. Is there anything you want to add, Liz, at this point? No, no, I think that's covered everything. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Well, obviously, thank you very much for coming on to the pod. No, thank you for having me. Okay. And a big thank you to Blackstar and Carry On for making us sound great. And a shout out to the pod sponsor, Record Shop in Amsham. They've got vinyl, CDs, guitars, and more. And if you mention the OK Football Show and you're nice, you might get a discount. And if you like this content, please subscribe to us on YouTube.